right, that looks pretty good for the uppercase port. I'm going to get this cleaned up, get it ready to go back together. I'm also going to uh, install a billet basket on this ring gear here. We'll grind off the rivets and install that red line billet basket. I think I showed this before, but here we go. I'm gonna grind this backing plate off here, taking these rivets out, punching them through. This piece in the trash, this piece you keep, all the rest in the trash. There's a little ring on here, it's concaved, make sure you get that on right. Little clean up. Let's see if we can get this shift shaft adjusted. I just did the star, so it's been rounded off there. Get this shift shaft in shape here. There we go, that's good enough. I like it about right there. We'll lock that up. There we go. Try to get that, keep that fork up off that dowel pin. Cases are clean. 
shift shafts in there adjusted correctly. All right, let's get this together. I'm going to put the half moon clips in. Two big ones, one small one. Dowel pins are in. Let's see. Uh, Got to get some of these uh, seals pressed in. Just press them in with your thumb. Got the shift shaft. Got to make sure it feels right. The clutch actuator that goes on top of the case. Put that in before uh, you get the cases together. all lubed up. Line up the seal with the rib. All these ribs pointed towards the bearing. You can see it rides right up against the bearing. forget our seal for the sprocket front sprocket uh, making sure that these seals go on right and they don't turn inside out or lose their spring there we go 12 11 3 bond it's the stuff I like you can get by with a lot of the other stuff this is just the one I choose. Kind of like what's your favorite oil? There's a lot of good ones out there. Okay, it does have a sequence here, starting with nine. Okay, sometimes this one can be a little difficult. That seal doesn't always want to cooperate. And these machining tolerances are so close, you got to get everything perfectly square or it'll bind and won't want to slide on. This one feels really tight, so I'm going to give it some help. Perfect. Spring, everything is fine. 
seal doesn't get turned inside out. Lubing it up really helps. Now, you know what I do here. I always give it a little dab of some three bond because this is a potential leak area. The machining tolerances do get worn out and or sometimes the aftermarket tolerances will be a little bit on the low side. So it'll suck air and you don't want it doing that. It's a comical washer, remember to put it on, right? Here we go with the case plate. That's what they call it in the FIS files on the OEM site. Loctite these. Get them started. All right. This is always an easy one to put on. Big flat washer, new basket, bushing insert, okay, another washer. The inside clutch balls. Then you just start stacking on your clutch fiber. This is an aftermarket one. Steel. Fiber. Steel. Got a new clutching, clutch locking washer there. It's keyed, it only goes on one way. Now I know I've showed you this before. We're gonna take this throw out plate and insert a pancake bearing in it. The stock one is keyed, so it spins with the pan with the throw out. Uh, everything turning in here, when that ball hits that rod, it creates so much heat under high horsepower, it welds itself. Uh, then you have to pull the transmission and knock it out from the back end because this transmission shaft is hollow. So you don't want to do that. Pancake bearing rectifies that problem by putting a little roller bearing behind here. This will allow it to spin freely. I'll adjust this once I get it installed. We need the rod and the bearing. And we put this on. 
can line up the arrow with the punch mark, or you can just guess. You got a 50-50 shot. There we go. Seats all the way down and touches the clutch fiber. That's how you know you got it right. Okay, I'm loosening it up so the whole thing wiggles there. Adjust it so this lever, the pointer, lines up with the pointer on the case. I fudge it to the stator side. Once it's adjusted to where I like it, I just tighten this up. Ten's usually on the pancake bearing, 12 is usually the nut. I use the OEM nut, it's smaller than the ones that come in the kit. There, nice, spins freely now. So that ball will not weld to that rod. They're all locked in. Let's see, I've got no stator, so we're not gonna put this flywheel on. Um, we have the Woodruff key, the nut that mounts the flywheel, the bolts that hold the stator on, but no stator. 